Hi, I am Max. Did you know that the second largest bone of my face is the maxilla? This forms my upper jaw. The first largest bone is the mandible, which is forming my lower jaw. Both these bones are allowing me to talk, right now. In mammals, the maxilla is tightly fused to the skull, but in fish and reptiles, it is not. In snakes, the maxilla is able to move relative to the rest of the skull, and the jaws can separate entirely to swallow prey. So, my maxilla will also help me to chew because my upper teeth are attached to it and I would be able to eat if I had internal organs. Thank you, Max. Now I'll take it from here. Let's dive into the anatomy of maxilla. We will learn all about the anatomical features of this bone which are present here. As you can see, it is also helping to maintain the facial shape. So let's take a closer look at Max's face to learn. As we can see, the maxilla exists in two halves, the right and left. They both are irregularly shaped bones that fuse together to make the intermaxillary suture. This is present in the middle of the skull below the nose. Let's look at the location of the maxilla bone within the skull. So this is the maxilla. It is superiorly articulating with the nasal bones, frontal bones and the lacrimal bones. Literally, it articulates with the zygomatic bones on both sides, which are the cheekbones. Medially, it articulates with four bones, the palatine, the vomer bone, the inferior nasal conchae, and the ethmoid bone. You must note that the maxilla does not form any joints with these bones, but these articulations are termed as sutures. Together these bones are forming the visocranium or our face. So now we'll move towards the anatomical landmarks of the maxilla. So this is the maxilla. Let's see which parts of the face are surrounding the maxilla. First, up from the back, it is taking part in forming the floor of the nose. From the front, it is forming the orbit and the lateral wall of the nose. And if you look down, it forms the roof of the mouth, which also helps in forming the infratemporal fossa, which makes up the hollow part of our skull called the infraorbital fissure. Now, the maxilla has two main parts, the body and the processes, which are four in number. The body has four surfaces and the maxillary sinus. The surfaces bear small projections, depressions, ridges and various other features. Secondly, we have four processes, which are the frontal process, the zygomatic process, the palatine process, and the alveolar process, where the teeth are attached. So, you can appreciate the maxilla, its processes, and the body in this diagram. These projections allow the formation of articulations with the neighboring bones or they might also allow the attachment of a muscle or a ligament. You must note that any grooves and openings in the maxillary bones provide passageways for blood vessels or nerves. Do not worry, the lecture is not over yet. We are going to learn in depth about the parts of the body and the processes in detail. So head on to scaria.com for the full lecture on the anatomy of maxilla.